class. Are we actually oh, we are actually live. <laughs> <And we're> live. <laughs> Shocking. I don't know how that's happened. Good afternoon, tribe, and so happy to have you here. We are really excited to have um, Dr. Dan Stickler um, on this afternoon. As a lot of you know, because you've been coming to PaleoFX, he's been a speaker at PaleoFX for a number of years. And um, in fact, we were talking, um, he went back and looked at some of his stuff that he did, like, what, in 2012 or 14 or somewhere like that? I think, I think it was 2013 or 14, yeah. Yeah. And, Same topic. <laughs> and, it really, and it was an interesting thing because he had actually forecasted some stuff that he's working on. So anyhow, um, which is really among other great. things. Mm -hmm. Among other things, Dr. Stickler is apparently has a crystal ball and can see into the future. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish. I wish we had seen this coming. <laughs> yeah, that'd be awesome. So anyway, we are here to talk about. Um, you know, obviously becoming hard to kill. We want to become resilient. We want to be really healthy humans. We want to be optimized. And I can't think of anybody better to tell us how to do that than Dr. Dan Stickler. And uh, he is my, me and Kim's personal doctor. And so I'm just going to tell you that I have felt better than I felt in years um, since I've been working with Dan. And um, I finally feel like I'm super optim optimized. And the other thing is too, is that we've had a lot of comments coming through to us about um, how, you know, we seem to be handling this and that we look really positive and that we look like, and I'm just going to tell you that when you feel healthy and you um, are, have a really positive outlook and you're really um, grounded in a lot of that stuff and, and have an, if you have an opportunity to work with Dan, I'm just going to tell you, I highly recommend it. And the thing is, is that I know that through all of this, we're actually being able to remain really calm through all of this because number one, we know we're really healthy and we have really optimized health. And um, we've got this man to, to boost all of that. I think the, only, the only drag in all of this is we had to cancel dinner with you guys. I know. I know. Because of the St. Patrick's Day dinner. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're gonna have to just do our 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 Zoom on. Uh, we're just gonna have to do a, a Streamyard dinner, maybe. I don't there know. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, um, so thank you so much for being with us, Dan. We really appreciate you coming on and talking to everybody. And I wanted to let people know. So Dan is an expert, is one of the foremost experts in the world on anti aging and um, regenerative practices and all of these things that you can do to really super optimize. We're talking like not just healthy, but we're talking beyond all health, super optimize um, as a human. So what does all of that, how can that play a role in what we're doing right now, considering what we've got going on with coronavirus and, um, and, uh, and, you know, the physical distancing thing. Yeah, we were, I was just, uh, had an interview with uh, one of our team members and, and we were talking about how we have to actually, you know, depending on circumstances, things that can be designed for optimizing may not actually be for optimizing right now. I don't know if you guys got the email we sent out this morning about the, the NAD and um, you know, the, in, in general, when we're looking in a, in a kind of baseline state and we're saying, hey, what, what can we do to really boost the system and, and be anti-fragile? Mm -hmm. NAD is a core piece of that. So getting either like an NMN or a nic nicotinamide riboside, NAD IVs, patches, whatever it is, is great. But in the current circumstances with the, the COVID-19 circulating around, you don't want any NAD supplemented into your system that'll actually make you more vulnerable to the virus because it it actually interferes with the the cd38 being able to to kill virus infected cells by starving them of nad and when you're supplementing it it actually makes it worse so uh, you you actually have to look at at circumstances and the current kind of ecosystem of the body and say okay is this an ideal time i mean even like uh, curcumin right now. I don't recommend people taking curcumin, even though on in a baseline state, it's a really healthy thing to do. But as of right now, it will upregulate the receptors that the coronavirus binds to. So there's there's very specific things based on circumstances that that have to be achieved. 
uh, you're talking about, you know, the anti-fragile state. And, and of course that all comes down to something that we need to establish as a baseline going forward period. It's not something that we just wait for something to come along and say, okay, I want to boost my immune system so I can be protected. We can layer on top of that baseline, but that baseline is really where all of this comes down to. Right. And baseline of course means dialing in nutrients, your, your diet, your sleep, your exercise, all of those things. And then of course your, your emotional and mental health. Cause I know a lot of people like kind of just don't even think about that piece being part of, your overall health is, you know, doing the things that you need to do to mitigate stress, um, meditation, that kind of thing. What, what are the kind of things that you do? Well, right now, I mean, we, we kind of jumped on this early. We, we, again, kind of forecasted a little bit ahead of the, of the curve that it, this was coming. So we prepared most of our clients with, uh, with stocking up on things. So what and we said, by the way, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we put together a peptide protocol uh, that is designed to boost the immune system in this acute phase. So this isn't something we, well, I mean, thymus and alpha is something that we can do periodically to, to get the immune system kind of boosted up. But in this acute phase, it's really important to upregulate it. Uh, so we're, we got everybody on the, on the thymus and alpha. We're using things like, like pentacin, which interferes with the uh, a virus getting into cells. We, we use things, uh, like c link which blocks the ability of the virus to, to actually attach to receptors on the cells. So we're using things like that to, to really, in the acute phase, help build the immunity up. We're, we're using things like, like liposomal glutathione, um, higher dose liposomal vitamin C is also beneficial at this point. And then even medications like, in this particular instance, Tadalafil, the 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 erectile dysfunction uh, drug works really well because it upregulates nitric oxide, which can help us protect against uh, viral invaders. So sometimes boosting the immune system is a very situation specific aspect. But like you said, the, the core piece of this, I mean, it all comes down to that lifestyle piece where you've got to dial in the sleep, the nutrition, uh, the, the exercise and movement, the cognitive function and I think probably most important thing right now is mindset. And it's like you said, you know, you're not letting this bother you. Yeah, this is going on out there and it's not going to change whether you're worried about it or whether you're just going, okay, I'm prepared. So I'm comfortable. I'm not stressing about this. Um, you know, making the best of, of your time where we're in isolation, like we're having, <laughs> we were talking about having the, the dinner through a Zoom link, which I thought was really cool, where we can socialize like that. Um, and and you know we, you'll probably hear some stuff in the background, but um, we've got a friend of yours. <laughs> hey. Hey. <laughs> um, Kirk, Kirk popped over here to get uh, get his brain scanned while we're uh, while we're in the in this time and time down. So we're making the best of everything that we have available. We get outside, we walk around the river mm -hmm. um, on a pretty regular basis and, and try to normalize things as much as possible. I know normalizing is not, not a word that people are using right now, but the body, the body does not like things out of routine. So we've been in a routine. And suddenly we're not in that routine. It doesn't matter if it's a, a good thing like a vacation or, you know, a holiday. Those routines disrupt the, the body's stress system and hence the immune system. Mm -hmm. So stress is probably the biggest impactor on the immune system. But everything plays into stress. Sleep, nutrition, uh, mindset, all of that. Dan, can we talk for just a minute about the numbers that we're seeing, because I think people are very, very confused about the numbers they're seeing, and, and, and me too, I'm confused as well. When when we <clears throat> look at the deaths due to flu in a common year, mm -hmm. and I and we just talk through those numbers about what we're seeing with COVID-19 as it relates to the flu, because because I think people people say, well, we you know we have I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of deaths worldwide per year due to the flu. And they see the number of cases reported for COVID-19 and the deaths, and they don't seem to stack up. 
And so yeah. there seems to be confusion as to why is there so much emphasis put on this COVID-19? Yeah. And, you know, a lot of this is, is difficult to explain and they don't have complete answers on this too. Right. But I can tell you, this is not an, an overhyped um, event that's happening right now. This is, this is a hugely impactful event and most people are already experiencing that. But, you know, we're talking about a doubling of the number of cases every two days now. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at over a million cases in, I think by the end of the month. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, think about that. I mean, we've got, what is it? Uh, 20 some thousand cases right now in the U S um, and by the end of the month, we're going to, um, I mean, and by the end of the month, we're going to have a million cases. I mean, that's, a, that's a big deal. And the, the virus, we don't even know, we don't even know the true numbers of who's infected because some people get it and just don't really pay attention to the symptoms. But we're also finding that we can't predict as well as we thought that it is only going to affect the old and the chronically ill in the severe cases. There's people getting severe cases that are under 50 years old and dying from this. So it is impactful. And you, in, I've talked to a couple of people that have had, that have contracted it, a couple of people that are in 10 to 14 days in, and they're describing this as pretty, I mean, I, I know it's, it's a couple of just anecdotal cases, but they're describing the pain that their body's experiencing is enormous. The shortness of breath is scary. And it usually is a, a 10 to 14 day course of this. I mean, this, this takes you out for a good period of time. And this is the big impact on the, on the economy. And, and this is why it is so important right now for us to follow these rules of social distancing and really trying to isolate and buckle down so we can get it over with fast. Yeah. If we all jump on board and, and do like the, um, you know, the other countries have done voluntarily though on our end, then we can, we can eliminate this thing very quickly from the population. If we have the stragglers that are out there saying, Oh, it's not a big deal. And they're going out and socializing and not following these, these rules, then you're going to be looking at months. Uh, 18 months is one prediction if it's not fully compliant with, with the population. So if you, if you're one of those people or you know, those people, let them know they need to just settle in for a month and, and let this thing, Kind of run its course so let me one other question i'm sorry yeah. as it pertains to the numbers so a, a a lethal but relatively hard to to uh tra transmit person to person something yeah. like COVID 19 not as lethal but easy to transfer person to person so more numbers are affected and maybe for someone healthy like us three, not not lethal, but in someone who is immunocompromised or in otherwise in poor health, serious. And and then it's just a numbers game from that. Right. It's that's true. all. That's all. This is this right. Is purely a numbers game. And uh, yes, the people over over, I think 80 years old. I mean, it's one in five people who get it are going to die. I mean, that's, that's substantial. Um, yeah. I saw I was in a nursing home up in Washington and they were predicting like more than 20% of the, the um, inhabitants of that nursing home were going to probably die. But you know, it is a, it is a significant impact. It's not something that we panic about. It's something that we just kind of say, okay, let's prepare for it. Let's do everything within our powers and altruism is one of the best ways to boost the immune system. You're doing something for the good of the community, for the good of others. And Steve Cole from UCLA had done a study on this on hedonic versus eudaimonic happiness. And what he found was that the, the epigenetic expression of the immune system in people that were practicing eudaimonia was substantially improved. I mean, this is the immune system expressions from the genes and the people that were hedonic were actually severely immunosuppressed. So that doesn't, doesn't help you out. <laughs> I don't know what will, uh, that's enough for me. So.
Well, I have a, so I had a question because you were saying that this wasn't acting like we thought that it was going to, and it is actually affecting people that are lower in age, um, under 50. Um, and some of these people are dying. Uh, can you tell us, I would, my thought process is not, if you're talking about that, is it not necessarily that they're immunosuppressed, but immunosuppressed, we'll say that three times, right? Immunosuppressed. <laughs> Or is it that they're, they actually have some underlying chronic inflammation issues, situations um, that are going on, like, you know, obesity, diabetes, heart disease, these kinds of things? Well, obviously those, those factors are going to play into it. Uh, so you're more prone to that when you don't have good health as a baseline. But there's also, you know, you're a statistic. <laughs> you know, I, I, you can't emphasize this enough. It doesn't matter if it's 0.1 or or one percent. Mm -hmm. If if you're in that 0.1, it's important to you, and and you can be. I mean, it's it's random and low percentage, but you don't want to be the one that's in that percentage for sure. Mm -hmm. And you know, one of the things they're noticing with with some of the the younger population is that they the common denominator is ibuprofen or non steroidal anti inflammatory drug intake. And they don't know the exact mechanism of this, but they're seeing a correlation and saying this is a common denominator in the young that are that are being hospitalized with the severest um, infections. So that's why the World Health Organization put out the recommendation not to take any non steroidals uh, in this in this case. Interesting. Well, and since I'm allergic to ibuprofen, like, there you go. I think it's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> Dan, what are some of your, your uh, go-to sources for information? Because I know that, that you are, you have vetted these sources of information. So are there some that you can give our audience that would be very, very good for them to, to look at? Well, I mean, try, try to find trusted uh, people on, uh, on social media, because there's so much crap out there on social media right now. And uh, from what I understand too, from one of my government sources, there's a lot of foreign governments that are feeding a lot of false information, uh, Stafford Act information and, and really fear-based tactics that they're trying to leverage. I mean, you're talking about the Department of Defense is having over 500 cyber attacks a minute right now from foreign countries. I mean, who leverages this kind of stuff? I mean, that, this is ridiculous. But what we, like for us and, and I share it with with our coaches in the group and I tell them to share it out to to their uh, their tribes. But I'm involved in about seven different WhatsApp groups that are the medical researchers, government people. And we're trying to there's it's amazing how the communities come together and, and these groups have just been created. And so we get to hear the information from government sources the research scientists and from all over the world, different regions of the world. So we will hear about something going on in Italy and we've got an Italy doctor in one of the groups and we'll say, okay, it, is this true? Is this what you're seeing there? Is this what, you know, you're experiencing a lot of stuff coming out of China is not, is not true either. So we're, we're trying to get that. So what we do is we take all this information and before we disseminate it, we all discuss it and say, okay, does this make sense? Uh, are we getting confirmation on this? Then when we get the, to that comfort level to say, okay, we've achieved that level of comfort to say we can put this out there, then we put it out to, to our groups. How do you find groups that are like that? I can't tell you for sure. I mean, like I said, we, we have 400 coaches in our academy and I've been sharing the information with them and telling them what information I'm finding that these groups are finding that, that it is legitimate information versus which is probably more scare tactic related. Oh, so this is, this is one thing, um, you guys, um, Aperon, which Aperon Academy is what Dan runs. And, um, this is where his health coaches. So uh, if you're interested in becoming a health coach, I highly recommend going, um, through Aperon, but they put on a webinar last night. We will put a link in the comments for all of you to be able to access that because they put out really great information last night. So um, to the recording. And so I, my recommendation is to follow Aperon for, for one thing, because um, lots of the information, obviously they bet, they make sure all the information is accurate and correct before they put it out because 
their reputation depends on it and they have a really great reputation. So that would be my recommendation. Yeah. And I just had a call with one of your coaches, Ryan Lester, the other day, and we had a 45 minute discussion. I mean, it was very in depth and that's what the benefit of working with, with Eperon is having access to people like that and up to date information and very credible information. Well, and that's what we, we, we try to maintain authority in this without getting into uh, dogma or hype or uh, false information. Um, we, we try to maintain that line there uh, before we put anything out. And, and I think that's important, especially since we're, we're also running our medical centers and, and all, every time I send a letter out to all of our medical clients, I share the contents of those letters to the group and I say, okay, this is what I'm sending out to my medical clients. If you guys want to share this, go ahead and share it to your group. Mm -hmm. Some rubber meets the road stuff, Dan. Fasting during a period like this, good idea, bad idea, middle of the road, if so, for how long? Uh, long, short answer, unknown. Um, I mean, if you're, if you're typically fasting, I'd recommend maintaining your fasting routine just because Again, breaking routine is going to disrupt the, the stress and create an impact on the immune system. So, I mean, as far as a nutrition and nutrition right now, I can tell you our nutrition is so far off base right now uh, just because we can't get anything. Right. I mean, we got it. We got some frozen fish the other day, which I was just thrilled about, but I uh, can't get any fresh fish right now. It's just right. not happening. So I know our, our omega ratios are really getting tanked, but we're, we're trying to supplement to, to maintain that. Mm -hmm. But this is definitely disrupting uh, nutritional status. Right. And you, you realize, you know, all these sustaining foods are these foods that have a long shelf life that you can store. They're just such bad nutritional value. Yeah, it's, it's, it really is. Um, and I, well, not an irony. It's it, it's a reality that you know when you store to to bunker stuff like that, it has to be long shelf life, which means the nutritional density and value is down in the hole. But also in times like this, like you said, it's very hard to procure fresh food. Right. And very very good fresh food. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's it's interesting. I, I know that it, what's so funny is I went um, shopping. I didn't like I, you know, because you were sending emails and everything I was preparing, but I wasn't preparing for the, for, I, I guess I should have kind of seen that mainstream was going to get a little bit insane. Well, we yeah. were rabbit holed into paleo FX yeah. <laughs> shifting. So, but we, but what was interesting is I didn't really realize the whole toilet paper thing was a real thing. <laughs> like, I was like, what? <laughs> Totally did not understand. So I went shopping over last weekend, went out to, and I normally for um, things because of the fact that they have really good organic stuff and they have grass fed um, meats and everything like that. So I can go and, and do, do really well, especially when you have to feed somebody like him. So, and <laughs> coffee has to be bought in bulk and be hoarded um, in times like this for him because he would yes. not get to live with if we had no coffee. So I go to Costco, I'm out there with a friend and we're like laughing and joking around and just, you know, we're, I'm being kind to people because it was very clear because I am in, uh, an empath. So I could feel the fear and the, just the panic and just the overall sense of doom that people had. And it was <laughs> really palpable thing. And I thought we're joking around. And I literally, there was a woman who was like, I can't believe that they're joking. Don't they understand what's happening? And I was like thinking, okay, if you think that this is the end of the world, <laughs> then I want to go this way. <laughs> but we were, we were out there and it was so interesting to just see the, the mindset of where people go and like, who would have, why would toilet paper be the thing? <laughs> like, yeah, that, I mean, that's not the top thing on my hoarding list, I can tell I, you. I would be like butter. Butter is grass-fed butter would be the thing. Like oh. highly nutrient-dense stuff, you know, avocados. I don't know. Avocados. Avocados. That was that oh, was. We, we had to make a trip to Trader Joe's yesterday because Miss Micro was missing her avocados. So. <laughs> We, we walked out. It was so funny walking through the Trader Joe's here in town and um, I, we walked down an aisle and it was so funny how people would automatically drift 
as you got close, they would make sure there was distancing. Yeah. I've never seen that before. I'd walk around a corner and somebody would, would kind of startle that I was getting close. And, <laughs> and I was the same way, you know, I'm, I'm like, Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm a bit too close here. It, it's amazing how this changes the, the collective. Yeah. Hey, speaking of Trader Joe's, do they have those badass almonds there? That is something I they would did. Know. They they had the uh, uh, almond. They called, uh, rosemary, <laughs> rosemary uh, yeah. Marcona almonds. Yeah, I might just ride my bike down there later and fill up a backpack. <laughs> <laughs> we have them. We've already got them. I already took oh, care of them. Oh, Michelle's <laughs> No, I'm not. They're not in the same place that they always are. He just anyway. <laughs> See, if they're out of sight, they're out of mind. Otherwise, he'd just like kill them in in one. <laughs> uh, any any other things, Dan, that you, that uh, you and Micra are doing personally that uh, might uh, well business stuff. Um, you know, this has completely disrupted our business, and I'm sure a ton of people out there are in the same boat. I mean, some people unemployed, other people have just complete. I mean every retail store in town is closed. Every restaurant is closed. I mean, what, what are people going to do? And for us, fortunately, we have an online component with our Academy. Uh, we'd actually step back to start to revamp all kinds of things just the week before the week after our big, um, event that we had here. And, uh, you know, this is a time for us to kind of reanalyze what we're doing, but you know, we've lost 60% of our, our monthly revenue and yet we're maintaining our full employee uh, um, numbers right now. So we're trying to figure out, you know, how long can we sustain this right. and how can we build on some of the, some of the online stuff by providing impact and value to people that's going to be worth it to them at a time when they're looking at it and going, I don't know if I should be spending on this kind of right. stuff. Right. Uh, it's, a, so it's a tight, tight um, line to walk there. Well, I want to ask you too, though, too, um, you know, obviously we have done our genetics testing with you. And so we know um, the impact that the genetic testing has had particularly on really shifting our lifestyle because, um, you know, here we are in paleo effects and we are technically not paleo um, because of our genetics. And so- We're um, Mediterranean paleo. <laughs> yeah. Right. But, but like um, most people would, would, say hardcore paleo, you're, you're not doing hardcore paleo. Well, um, we're more of a modified Mediterranean keto diet is really what and I eat now, um, based on our genetics. And so, um, my, my wonder, I, what I'm wondering is on the, the genetic side of things, when you're doing these things to optimize your health, um, I would assume that knowing some of these genetic markers that you might have that you need to just also would have an ultimate impact. I'm wondering what kind of impact it would have had had we not known our genetics, not changed our diet and lifestyle on um, almost what, it's been almost a year and a half, two years. Um, I'm wondering what that kind of impact would have had on us um, possibly being open to, you know, yeah, more, more susceptible. More susceptible. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, everything we do from a lifestyle standpoint can be directed to individual response that's going to be best. Um, like in our, in our genetic reports, we use nutrition, uh, we use supplementation, we use sleep, we use um, immune system, which is our detoxification environmental health panel, um, where you can find out things that can actually boost the immune system. We have athletic performance and we have hormones. And, you know, right now it's a great time. I mean, you, you've got all this time at home to really focus on you and so getting this, getting your genetic test, you can get results in about 14 days from the time you, you get the, the swab back and you can get online with a coach and spend an hour going through this stuff, explaining how this stuff works. And we actually reinstituted, we had a, when we first launched this, this genetic kit, we, we had it for 397, which was, um, which was about half the price that we normally sell it for. And that ended back in December, but we're actually relaunching it now at that price so that we can help our coaches out because we actually give these clients to our certified coaches. Yeah. And that way we're helping them to build 
or to maintain their, their business volume right now while they're unable to, to generate other incomes, especially the ones that have brick and mortars. But this is all online where you can, you can have the kits shipped to you. You do the swab, you send it back in, and then you get on, on a call with your coach who will review either the 40 page report or the 80 page report on your, your personal genetics and give you lifestyle guidance that is, that is really customized exactly to, to your genetics. Yeah. Uh, and I cannot say how much an impact that has been for me and Keith. Hey, we're going to, we've got a question here that I want to ask you. So what you, about you like that question feature, don't you? Yes, I do. <laughs> That's <is> so cool. <laughs> so our friend Frank, Frank Preeb asked, what about the media hyping the fix as some vaccines being created in an, in an ASAP way? This seems to be a way to inform people that a cure is pending. Then the next year use this as a standardized vaccine. What do you think? Wow. Well, I, I think people are being overly optimistic. I mean, based on what I'm hearing from the research community is that the, the vaccine is still 12 to 18 months away. They had one vaccine that they were fast tracking that actually had major complications when it was administered. Um, so not really, uh, not really the success that they anticipated it would be. And I think you're going to see a lot more of that coming. Will they beat the 12 to 18 month mark? I hope so. But yeah. I, I can't tell you for sure. I mean, this is a novel virus. I mean, it's not something we've ever been exposed to. This is why it's so dangerous right now. I mean, we've been exposed to different versions of the flu over the last several years. We've been exposed to different versions of coronavirus. But this one seems to be one that we don't have really innate immunity or, or a memory in our immune system to any aspect of it. So with flu, you can have a memory to a portion of it so you can reduce the the impact of the flu on the body but with this this we're just not seeing that and and this is hugely impactful because of that fact okay so when you say that does that mean if i if i get coronavirus and i say i test positive for coronavirus does that mean that we don't necessarily build up the immunity so that if we get in uh um exposed again that there's a possibility we could actually get it again this is a question that a lot of the researchers are trying to get answered right now. Uh, reinfection, some are suggesting that it's possible. The likelihood is extremely, extremely low okay. um, because the body really does build up a pretty strong immunity once it's exposed to this. Um, but it's just like the, the flu. I mean, next year's version will be slightly mutated a little bit that will make it still that you'll have a partial immunity, but not full immunity. So, uh, I, for, they did a study on rhesus monkeys with this coronavirus and they said, you cannot get reinfected with it, but that's, that's monkeys. And, and it was just a single study. So we don't know the answer to that. I would say it'd be very low likelihood to get reinfected with it though. Dan, can you speak to the, uh, the cytokine storm that, uh, that comes from having an, I don't know what to, uh, an overactive immune system? Yeah, it's, it's really overactive. It's, that, it, it's an unchecked immune system. Uh, so like in, in trauma, we used to deal with a lot of uh, what we would call SIRS, systemic inflammatory response syndrome. And it was where there was an insult, like an infection that started a cascade of the immune system. But then that cascade of the immune system was what was causing the damage to the other organs in the body. And you got multi-organ failure from it because it just went rampant on us. And th this is where they, they like to use steroids, steroids to calm the immune system down and, and not have that created. But then there's complications from the steroids. So everything we do is, uh, you know, a, a pro and a con, and you have to kind of figure out what the balance is in, the, right. in that scenario. Right. And so are there things that people should maybe avoid supplements they should avoid to, to prevent that from happening? Uh, not necessarily the, the, the cytokine storm. I mean, there's some, some people are promoting things like elderberry and, and, um, right. and, and some are promoting curcumin, but I wouldn't recommend the curcumin because of the fact that, you know, we're seeing an upregulation of the ACE2 receptor. So you're going to be more prone to get the, the virus. Um, everything is a balance. And so for me, I'm just, you know, my goal is to build my natural immunity. Now, I'm not saying I'm doing it naturally. I'm enhancing it. I'm using the thymus and alpha. I'm, 
um, using the C-Link. And, and if I get infected, I'm going to use LL37, which will also block the ability of the, of the virus to get into the cells. Those are enhancements to the, to the baseline of the immune system. But for me right now, I'm taking liposomal vitamin C. I'm doing C-Link nasal spray on a daily basis. Um, I mean, there's on top of that, a multivitamin fish oil and vitamin D. I know Chris Masterjohn put out a thing on vitamin D the other day, and I was, I was a bit surprised by the conclusion he made on that, where he didn't recommend vitamin D. And he said that it upregulated the ACE2 receptors, but vitamin D is critical for a healthy immune system. And, and the study he quoted was in, in rats with lipopolysaccharide exposure, and they used doses that were huge, enormous doses of the vitamin D. So to, to correlate that and say that, that you don't take it because it can upregulate that, I thought was, was a little bit of a stretch of, of the stretching the conclusion based on all the evidence there. So I, I had to, had to kind of mitigate that with a lot of our clients who had read that article because a lot of them follow Chris Masterjohn. Right. And, uh, How's doing? and it was, it, yeah, it was, it was a little surprising to me. And what was the nasal spray again, Dan? And why, and why do you use it? C-Lank, S-E-L-A-N-K. And it's, it's actually a, um, anxiolytic nootropic. Um, it, it's used for general, an, generalized anxiety disorder. Okay. And it also, it helps boost sleep according to, uh, some Dr. Parsley guy. Um, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> He wow. recommends taking it before that. Uh, but it, um, it was shown in a Russian study back in, I think, 2011, mm -hmm. that in uh, influenza, so another viral illness, in just two days, uh, the daily dose of the nasal spray was able to reduce the total viral load to zero in two days. We don't know the full mechanism of how it's working, but, um, you know, it's enough for me to say, okay, well, I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and uh, rely on that a little bit and, and having a little bit of anxiety, uh, anxiolytic effect, um, you know, it's probably good for the stress system too. Right. Probably. So I want to ask you is a question. A prescription or I, that... I was going to just ask, right. do you, can they get that on your store? No, no, that's a, you have to get that from research chemical companies or a pharmacy. Uh, so okay. we get ours from the pharmacy. Um, have you not gotten yours? No. <sighs> <laughs> Okay, we, we have a dose pack for you guys. So we've got oh, yeah. we've got the liposomal glutathione, the C Lank, uh, Tadalafil, and uh, Montelli Montelli. Yeah, I do have that. We, I do have the glutathione, but I don't have that. So yeah. Okay, I did want to ask you a question because I was sent this a couple of days ago, and so there was a lot of confusion. You met you brought up elderberry just a minute ago. So um, there was a naturopath doctor who sent this out and said, "Do not take elderberry." elderberry with coronavirus infection. It will further increase the inflammatory cytokine IL-6 that combines with the high TGF beta in the cytokine storm to damage the lungs, kidney, and heart vasculature. If you're taking it for flu prevention, then stop now when this pandemic is resolved and no longer. What do you know about that? And um, I didn't understand because yeah. actually... I've seen ahead. the IL-6 associations um, and... You, again, you got to look at the balance of what you're trying to achieve with this. I don't think that there's enough of an impact on the system with the IL-6 to, to create a storm out of this with just taking elderberry. Um, it's just, it's, you know, you got to look at the degree of impact on this and the degree of impact will really kind of sway the needle into benefit versus detriment. And I think elderberry in and of itself is probably one that's a benefit. Same with vitamin D. You know, yeah. you look at the detriment versus benefit. Yeah, it may upregulate a little bit of the ACE2 receptors, but if you're boosting the immune system substantially, does that really matter? Mm -hmm. And, it, you know, this is, why, this is why we really promote the systems-based approach to health and wellness. You've got to look at every, you've got to take into account as many of the variables as you can yeah. and come up with a probability answer in the overall picture. And that's why you can't take an isolated finding of, of one study that says, oh, it affects this one system. No, it everything affects that one system. And how does that interact with the other things that are affecting that system to create the outcome? Right. Definitely. 
Well, this has been awesome. Thank you so much for coming on. Did you have anything else that you want well, to ask? I could sit here for hours. Well, yeah, we could. But <laughs> I don't know that Dan's got that kind of time. <laughs> apparently, we'll have to uh, set up like an old school um, Cold War drop zone somewhere to drop our, <laughs> just so we can pick up our, pick up our drop without. Uh, well, you you came to the drop site today, so uh, you know where it is. Yeah. If I yeah, if I had known, I'd have just had that picked up too. I didn't have any idea. Okay. So we can we can do that. <laughs> Thank, Thank you very much for coming on and answering questions for us. And uh, it was a pleasure. Yeah. Finding all this information. Was well, crazy. and the other thing is, if you have more questions, I actually know how to get a hold of this guy. So <laughs> if you have questions and you're watching this on replay. Please put your questions in the um, in the comments, and we will um, come back and try to get those answered for you if we can. The other thing is that the links for um, the genetic testing and for the Aperon um, webinar, which is on demand, you are in already in the comments because his team is like totally on top of this. They're, so they, they're already put it in. We were going to have our team do it later, but anyway. So thank you, Melissa, for being on and taking care of that for for everybody. And um, so anyway, if you um, if you have questions or anything, please please let us know, and we will we would love to have Dan come back on again with us soon. All right, thank you guys. Thank Absolutely. you. Appreciate it. Bye. Bye bye.